to say this, there's one fundamental difference between living our day-to-day -day here and living our day-to-day -day here. There's a one really big quintessential distinction I want to draw to you. When we're up here, we are living on purpose. We have a kind of a dream that we're looking to fulfill. There is something we want to create and we're working for the sheer love and joy of it. We know what we want to create. We are playing to win and create something that we care about and we know who we are and we know what we care about. We know a little bit about what quest you're on in life. Whatever job you're in, we understand how that job fits into the quest you're on in your life. What quest are you on? What journey are you on? And how does the work you're in now support that? See, up here, the question of what do I want to create and what do I really care about and what do I want to do that matches into that, these are the primary questions that we ask and they're the questions that we can ask that actually begin to help us draw up here and when we ask those questions, we're temporarily kind of asking the questions that our creative self, our self-authoring self, as Professor Robert Keegan described it, says that they're the ones that, that predominate our mind more. How is that different to down there? Down here, we're no longer, up here we're playing to win. Down here, we're really playing not to lose. Right? Down here, we're putting fires out every day. We're just making sure shit doesn't happen. That's not going to happen. I've got to make sure this doesn't. Oh, what are we going to do? Make sure that that gets an on time. I don't know whether it will. I've got to make sure that could get me, be late. Oh my God, we don't know. I, we don't know enough. This is going to be, and we're constantly being driven to fix to fix up a potential threat, to make sure something doesn't get terrible, to stop catastrophes, put out fires. This is, so we're playing here to not lose. We're playing here not to lose. We're playing here to prevent bad stuff happening. And so, and that, so a lot of our attention is drawn to the world that is right now, this material world that's around us, our timetables, our budgets, our emails, our appointments, uh, the things we've got to put in, because we're looking at all that material world around us going, holy shit, bad stuff could happen any time and I've got to stop it. I've got to stop it. I've got to bring some order to this chaos, <laughs> you know. And, and this is the world we're living in here. And as you can tell, it's a threatening kind of world here. It's threatening. We have a lens that tells us where problems and threats are and we just move around from one thing to the other, trying to put your, you know. I sometimes think of that, you know that old fashioned game on the, in the arcades where you get a hammer and you bang the little squirrel's head that jumps up and then another one jumps up and, and you bang it and you keep banging it and you can't go fast enough. It's not dissimilar really to living life like this. That's how many of us are living. Did you know that adults, only 20% of adults have fully migrated to live out of this self? Only 20% are fully positioned here, living primarily out of this creative self, having established an, a sufficient sense of safety and security that they're not as concerned about failing anymore and they want to create something that matters. The other 80% are either fully positioned here or as many of us are here, we're kind of in transit. We've got one part of ourselves here and sometimes we experience ourselves here too. Have you done that? Have you experienced yourself up here? You probably have. Where you've just noticed you did something, you're in the flow of it, you loved it. You just did it and you forgot about the pressure and the anxiety and you just cared about this thing you made and it was awesome and you were momentarily up here. So it is momentary because a good deal of our time we're down here and that's why for many of us adults, and this has been measured, we have elevated levels of adrenaline and cortisol rushing through our bodies. St we're stewing in stress hormones, stewing in them, looking for threat, our mind is seeing it, the feelings that we have are create an alertness, a hypervigilance, which then affects our brain. Did you know there are far more neuronal connections running from heart to brain than there is from brain to heart. So our, our hearts 
um, go, it's slightly arrhythmic, it's not coherent in its beat, it's uh, fast, and the, and the heart is sending all this information up to the brain going, I don't know, something's going on, look for the threat because something bad's happening. It's like you're watching a scary movie and the music's coming up, you know, and you're thinking, shit, something bad's going to happen, you know, and it's actually what we're living in every day. And so this is living down here, living down here, and some days are worse than others. But all this is, is simply being at this level of adult development where we're not quite secure in who we are yet and we're trying to organize the world around us to make us feel okay, to secure ourselves. If I can only get my to-do list done, <laughs> then I'll be all right, mm -hmm. you, know? you know? If I can only just, you know, that tension in that team, if I can only just smooth that over and get that tension and sort that out, then I'll be all right. If I can only know more, if I can only get more expertise, then I'll finally. So we are here constantly trying to rearrange life and change things around us so that we can not be stressed anymore. We're fighting with life, really, because we think we have to change what's out there to feel okay inside. But there's a part of us that knows that it's a kind of a dumb strategy, really. There's a part of us that knows this. That, and we've met people who seem to have this persistent sense of well-being no matter where they are and what they're doing. We've met them. And it's even been us sometimes. So the migration up here is a very special one because it means we don't, we're no longer about trying to change the world to feel good or to feel safe or secure. We, our sense of identity is such that we feel actually increasingly okay. We know it could go us over T, you know, we know it could fail, but somehow or other, it doesn't shake us to the core like it used to. We're not quite so disturbed by the possibility of that. So our sense of security, our sense of well-being is gets founded on something a little different. It's no longer founded on trying to organize the world, to or shape it up so that it looks in the way I think it should, so that I can then feel safe and not so anxious about it. It's a guess, it's just a false pursuit. That is the pursuit that most of us are in.